Hello students, I hope you are all fine and in good health in this audio presentation. I will be discussing some of the textbook questions that you have. And uh, these questions are uh, mostly NCRT questions. So I have written at the top, Albert Einstein at school NCRT solution. And then it is written textbook questions. So let us come to this. First question. What do you understand of Einstein's nature from his conversations with his history teacher, his math teacher and the head teacher? That means what exactly can you say about the nature, about his character uh, uh, from the conversations that he had with the history teacher, with his math teacher and with the head teacher? Albert Einstein from his boyhood showed the signs of his future greatness. He was far more ahead of the classroom teaching. He was ahead of his times also. He was very progressive minded. He was very much innovative in his thoughts, in his ideas or ideologies concerned. He was extraordinary unlike the boys of his age and class. He was forthright and thoughtful. He had his own views on education. And what was his views? Education should be a combination of facts and ideas. He used to give ideas much more priority than facts. Being a free thinker, he thought differently from his history teacher. And that actually angered Mr. Brown, the history teacher, a lot. Mr. Brown asked him to tell the date when the Prussians had defeated the French. Albert said frankly that he saw no point in learning dates by heart. Real education, he said, should give ideas rather than facts. Now, according to him, the real education, the real education, in real education, uh, more important should be given to ideas than facts. Innovation and creativity actually matters. But Albert's math teacher, Mr. Koch, had a high opinion about the boy. He readily gave him a testimonial or a ready reference that Albert was totally fit, totally eligible for studying higher maths in a college or institute. The headmaster thought that Albert was a nuisance who made it impossible for the teacher to teach and the other pupils to learn. And so at the very end of this chapter, we find the headmaster uh, expelled him. But before a letter of expulsion was given to him, he decided to move out of the school on his own accord. Now, dear students, I'm moving on to the next question. The school system often curves individual talents. Discuss. That means you have to discuss it with reference to the chapter Albert Einstein at school. I repeat the question. The school system often curves individual talents. Discuss. The school system is defective. It fails to do the job properly. For example, the objective of education is to discover and develop the aptitude and hidden talents in every child. Education, the real education should encourage and nurture the creative potential of a child. But unfortunately, education is doing exactly the opposite one, the opposite thing rather. Not all children have similar likes and dislikes or equal intelligence and interest in the subjects taught. Every child is unique and every child should be given equal importance and preference. Every child may not have the same likes and dislikes for every subject. So a child's likings and dislikings also should be given due importance. But our school insists on teaching the same things to the entire class. But the school, the school curriculum or rather to say the procedure of teaching is the same thing, exactly the same thing to each and every student inside the class. 
Now, this kills pupils. Pupils means students, creative quality and their original thinking. So ultimately, when the same monotonous thing is being taught to each and every student inside the class, ultimately it destroys, it kills the creative potential, the creative quality and the original thinking of a child. Einstein was interested in maths and geology because we find he was actually reading a book of geology when Elsa came to visit him in his poorest quarter in Munich. And he was also interested in music also because he used to play the violin as we get to know. Naturally, he came in a clash with his history teacher. He rightly felt miserable in Munich school and not only he hated the school but he also hated the environment where he used to stay. That means overall he hated Munich to a great extent and wanted to sneak out of it. He wanted to get out of this place at the earliest because it seems that at the very end he was not depressed or not sad that he was been expelled from the school but he felt very happy because he spent five miserable years in that school naturally i repeat this line he came in a clash with his history teacher he rightly felt miserable in munich school he proved his brilliance after leaving munich after leaving munich he proved his brilliance. Next one, how would, do you distinguish between information gathering and insight information? History is a bundle of dates and details of battles and political wrestling because history obviously, when we read history, we find in history dates and details related with battles and political wrestling. The pupils are compelled to learn about kings and words, about particular dates and places. The students are actually compelled. They are actually compelled to learn about kings and words, about battles and about various dates. When the battles were fought, who owned the battle, what are the casualties, everything. This is just information gathering. This is what we say. From the perspective of educational scenario, this is what we say as information gathering. It leaves no scope for questioning the motives behind every battle. And that was the reason Albert told Mr. Brown that I am not bothered about how many soldiers were killed or what are the casualties or which army killed more men or which particular army was victorious. I am more eager to know why those soldiers were, were very much eager to kill each other. So that was his innovative question. But actually, Mr. Brown felt insulted from inside. And that was the reason he scolded and punished Albert Einstein because he doesn't have a definite answer for that question. But the question that was being asked by Albert that why those soldiers were trying to kill each other, it was a very sensible and a very logical question. So I repeat, dear student, this is just information gathering. It leaves no scope for questioning the motives behind every battle. Real education should enable a child to think and draw conclusions from whatever he learns. It should prepare him to take initiative and think about ideas because ultimately there lies the success of real education because a real education ultimately enables a child to think, not only to think, but also to draw conclusions from whatever he learns so that he can draw his own conclusions from whatever he learns because that ultimately nurtures his creative potential or we can say his creative talent. He should prepare, it should prepare him. It means that real education, the real education being referred here as it, it should prepare him to take initiative and think about ideas because ideas matters. Facts also matters, but facts alone never matters. It is only ideas. Ideas are important. Ideas and facts, there should be a proper balance 
that that is what real education is all about and that is what albert einstein told many years ago to the history teacher mr brown not only facts only facts doesn't define education education should be a combination of facts and ideas so i repeat this line dear students it should prepare him to take initiative and think about ideas it must develop intellect and should not make people's behave like parrots so rote learning or parrot reading must not be encouraged a student should think if from an innovative perspective and then it will help him to drop draw up his own conclusion regarding any particular subject that means he should be encouraged to nurture his creative potential he should be encouraged to go on thinking uh, on an innovative level parrot learning or learning or behaving like parrots or rote learning is not the ultimate form of education so dear students uh, i end my audio presentation related with this textbook questions kindly go through this audio presentation and if there is any difficulty anywhere kindly let me know about it thank you students thank you all